Hey guys, this is Dave the Software Dev again, and this is going to be the fourth video of our snake game tutorial where we're building a game where a snake moves around a grid and eats little pieces of food, and every time he eats a piece of food, he grows in size. Uh, we're actually going to uh, really make this game actually playable now. Um, there'll be one more video after this, but we're going to do all of our collision testing and everything necessary to make the game actually function. With, uh, with the first level. So uh, to begin, uh, let's just start here in our uh, snake.js file that we've been working on and uh, we're going to add uh, an add timer. So what this is going to do is basically going to be a, uh, a timer so that, <laughs> that's funny, every time that the snake picks up a piece of food we're going to set the add timer to 2, right? and then as the snake moves again two more times we're going to increase his length by two so uh, that's what that add timer is going to do. We're also going to add a, uh, a game over and set it to false and we're going to uh, loop until our game over is true. So the next thing I want to do is I want to update our snake.move function. Uh, we're going to do some uh, collision testing and also uh, add to the snake as he moves, and uh, lastly, uh, move his body forward and not just the head. Okay, so we've expanded the move function quite a bit. So what we've added here is we've added tracking of what the last position of the snake's uh, uh, body was. So as the snake grows larger, we're going to be adding uh, to the end of the snake, right? So we want to, to pick up the last uh, point X and point Y of our uh, list of snake uh, positions. So we're also going to, before we move the snake's head, which we were doing uh, before I changed this function, we're going to move the snake's body. So the way that the snake moves is that you start at the end of the snake and you set each uh, snake position to the position uh, that was just in front of it. So if you've got, um, for instance, these are your snake's, um, snake's head or snake's body, and I'm just going to give them a number, right? We're going to take the eight, the last position of the snake here, and we're going to move it into position 7, right? And then we're going to go down, and we're going to move each of these into the one right before it, such that, this is assuming that the snake is moving to the, uh, to the right here, or to the left. So each of these will be moved one position over, right? to uh, to basically replace whatever position uh, that the snake was in before. And we're going to move the head separately from the rest of the body. So we start at the snake length and we go uh, un until uh, i is equal to 1 so that we won't move uh, position 0. And it's really simple. All we do is set uh, that position x to the position right before its x and that position y to the position right before its y and then we tell that uh, that particular position to redraw itself. So once that's done, we're going to move the snake's head, and we do that by adding whatever direction our move x and move y are in, just as we did before, and telling it to redraw. Lastly, if our add timer is set, then we're going to add a new snake position to these last points that we pulled up here at the beginning. So for instance, again to show our example, so we've moved our snake, right? He say so he has six positions here. Uh, ah, let me get that right. Okay, so we moved him over one. We're going, but we kept track of what the last position was here. So we're just going to add a new one there. So the effect will be that our snake will grow by one. And then on the next loop of this, we'll add another one there. And it decrements that add timer until it's back down to zero. Uh, so we'll be setting the add timer in our collision function, which I'm going to write next. Lastly, we call the check collisions function, which I'm going to actually write now. So in our check collisions function here, the first thing we do is we check to see if the snake's head is on top of our piece of food by seeing if the, uh, the x is equal to the food x and the snake y is equal to the food y. If it is, then we're going to set our add timer. Uh, which we use up here to increase the size of the snake. And we're going to create a new piece of food uh, somewhere at a random position uh, on the screen. 
The next thing we do is we check to see if the snake's head has collided with a wall. So um, we basically get whatever the position type, if you'll recall our uh, get position type function here that was a helper that returns whatever uh, tile is at a given x and y. We check to see if that position type is equal to wall at the position of the snake's head. And if that is true, then uh, our game's over. The last thing we do is we loop through the snake itself, uh, excluding the head. So we start at i of 1, and we check to see if um, any position of this snake is equal to the snake's head position. That would mean that the snake has collided with itself. Uh, if that's true, uh, then our game is also over. So uh, just to show you what that would look like. So if you have a snake that looks like this, and then, uh, for instance, here's the snake's head, right? And then you move him down one, so there's the snake's head. And then he moves around a couple of times, so his head is there. And then he tries to go back up. Well, he's collided with himself, right? So, uh, so that would be a collision that we're checking here. Anytime the snake's head is equal to another position on the snake, then it's a collision with himself, and therefore the game is over. So uh, let's actually uh, use this, this game over value now. Okay, so we're going to go back to our index file. And in our game loop, we're uh, only going to tell it to call itself again if, uh, if snake.game over is false. So this way our game will actually uh, end whenever that game over flag is set. Lastly, I'm going to increase the speed of it a little bit by going down from 250 milliseconds to 200. All right, now one thing I forgot to do as our snake moves, we need to actually uh, set those tiles to redraw themselves. So we're going to call our, our set position redraw function. For each uh, tile that makes up the snake, So we'll use the X of the snake. And that's going to redraw our, uh, our tiles. So the last thing I'm going to do uh, for this video is as we move the snake's head, I also need to redraw the tile under the snake's head. So just like we set uh, snake position redraw here, I'm going to set the redraw for the snake's head position before we move it. So let's take a look at, uh, at our game. I'm going to reopen our window here. This is uh, where it was when we last left off. And uh, it should now actually uh, be functional. So I'm going to move our snake. I'm going to grab a piece of food. He grew a little bit. As you can see, the, the tail is following the head of the snake. Grab our piece of food. He's growing again. So this game at this point is actually uh, playable. Now let's test our, our collision uh, checking. We've tested colliding with a piece of food. Let's collide now with a wall. And our snake stops moving because the game was set to game over. And he doesn't move anymore because our game's over. If I refresh, let's collide the snake with himself. Going to get him to a good size here. And there. He just collided with himself and he stopped moving. And our game is again over. So uh, that actually makes this game functional, but it's not yet complete. We've also got uh, the capability of adding additional levels. And I would also like to get a game over indicator uh, on the screen uh, instead of uh, the game just stopping. So we're going to do that in our next video. Uh, if you like this, please share it and uh, subscribe.